Hey there, my name is Spencer Stark. I'm the designer of Alice is Missing, and today I'm gonna run you through sort of the first in a three-part series of videos to teach you how to run the game online. Given sort of the times that we're in, I know that Alice is probably gonna be run digitally for at least the first couple months of its life, and I wanna make sure it's easy to pick up. In this first video, I'm gonna go through how to set up your Roll20 with the marketplace item that we offer for the games before your players even show up. So there's some work that you'll have to do to sort of get things set up. Nothing crazy, but enough that I wanna sort of run you through how to get it set up here so that when you're in the game, it's a lot easier and faster. One of the things, and I'll talk about this when we get there, but one of the things that this game has at the table when you're all together, but that is a little more difficult here, is the, the initial setup itself uh, is pretty quick. Um, when it's online, uh, your players are both learning how the game works, and they're having to navigate Roll20, like learning the actual medium in which they're playing in. So I just want to make things as easy and as streamlined as possible so that when you get to the table with your players, everything is set up. So let's jump in. So when you open up Roll20, you're probably going to be on this screen. There are two sections here, the intro card and the missing person poster. We're going to fill those in in just a minute, but I want to direct your attention just to kind of the overall layout of the game. So what I did here is I designed a bunch of rooms. So if you click this little button, this page toolbar up here, you'll see all the rooms that you can move through. Um, so you'll see there's a little flag here. This is players. You're going to be able to switch between these rooms freely, but in order to bring your players along, you have to drag this little bookmark. We'll get there when we do setup, but just so you know sort of how this navigation bar works. So I have a bunch of rooms. We have the introduction rooms so is the first place that you're going to go it has the intro card and the missing person poster Then we have the character creation section um, that we're going to fill in the starting hunches section that we're going to fill in and then the clues setup. Um, and if you haven't read through the rule book, I would go ahead and do that as well, uh, especially the facilitator's guide. It's going to give you a good sense of how the game plays at the table. There's also an online play section. I'm going to cover some of the same stuff here, but not all of it. So make sure you read that so that you get anything that I don't cover here. You'll see we move the clue setup into gameplay. This will be something that's more used for it to resolve more used when the game actually begins, but there is a little bit of setup we'll do here. And then finally the debrief section. So all this comes like this because I want you to be able to know how to set up the game and then how to reset the game. So I don't put anything in these sections when you when you get the package because um, I want you to put it all in yourself so you know how it's done and then you'll be able to do it later. So the first thing we'll do, we'll start in the intro. Um, before your players even join, uh, before they even get their characters, really, if, if you want to, um, just when you're sort of getting it set up so that you can know what the game is and wrap your head around it before you invite other people to play, you're going to pull out some of these cards so that we have guidance um, on, on what options to give the players. So uh, the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to go to, you should start here, which is the over on the right hand side, which is the, the chat section. Um, this should be the default, I'm pretty sure, if you're logged into Roll20. Um, but you'll see there's a bunch of options here. Uh, this one is the the art library, so don't worry about that. Um, I don't know if they'll have anything in it or not. It has a bunch of the art stuff that I have uh, that I've uploaded for the game, but um, for you might be blank, I'm not sure. Uh, or it might have stuff from your other games of Roll20 that you've played. The little journal tab here, these are your character sheets and the game guide. Um, which we'll talk about as well. There's also the jukebox. We'll be using the jukebox to be able to make the voicemail section. You'll see there's already a, a playlist here. I will show you in the next video how to set that up because you're going to need voicemails from all your players before you can do that. And then there's the collections section, which has really the most important bit that you're going to need, which are the decks, um, the decks of cards. So you'll see there's a list of the decks of cards here. Um, the very bottom one, is called playing cards, you're gonna ignore that. There's no way to get rid of it. It's sort of base standard inside of Roll20. So all these other cards you're gonna use, but playing cards, you're not gonna worry about that. With that being said, I'm gonna hide these because these, I don't know if these will come up standard or not, but if they don't, you'll click on collection here and then you'll scroll down to the intro card and hit show, and then the missing person posters and hit show. So those are gonna pull those up on your right hand side. And you'll notice if you mouse over them, they have a little like thing that pops up here. That's how you're going to pull stuff out of these decks. I mean, you're going to have to teach your players this when it comes to the game time. So, uh, so definitely get used to it yourself. So yeah, you're going to just mouse over the intro card. You'll see it pop up. If it says shuffle, which you'll see it say just a second, just make sure you click that and then it should pop up if it's not. Um, so you'll pull that out and drop that in here and you just put it 
right inside of there. Now, when we get to the gameplay, you're going to be grabbing this card and putting it into your hand, but just to make it feel like there's a little bit of like, you know, gameplay already happening when you do the intro card, I've, uh, I've made it here accessible for you. And then next, you're going to come down here and you're going to pull a missing person poster. This is going to work the same. It's just going to pull a random missing person poster and you can just place it into this spot here. And then you're going to use this. You're going to track down in the downloadable files uh, that you should have for the game. Um, this will be included. This All these posters will be included. So you'll grab this poster and send it to the players so that they know which one you're using. Okay, that's all you have to do in this section um, to get it set up. But you wanted to know who this Alice was, so that randomly gave you that. Uh, then we're going to click toolbar and we're going to click over to, oh, we should bring this back to the introduction because that's where the player should go when they first arrive. Um, we're going to go to character creation and we're going to get this set up. So I'm going to go down to here and hit hide. You'll see those decks go away, which is totally fine. We don't need the, those decks anymore. There's no reason to have them out. All right, we're going to show our character cards and we're going to show our motive cards. You'll see they'll pull up here like this. They both say shuffle. It's probably because I've played with them before. Yours may or may not. But if they do, you can just hit shuffle, shuffle the deck, shuffle, shuffle the deck. Cool. Great. Now we're going to grab these and we're just going to spread these across the character section. These are going to give us a random spread of our characters. We're going to put all five out. Um, even if you don't have uh, five players playing, including yourself, you can still put all five out. It's totally fine um, because we're going to pair motives with them. So I'm going to put all those out and then I'm going to grab the motives and the motives are going to be face down uh, and they're randomized. Motives don't have to stay face down. I usually do it to create sort of an air of mystery around them. Uh, they're not really a mystery. I mean, they, they, it doesn't really impact the game whether people know your motive or not. But, you know, that character's the only one that really needs to know it. Um, so it's not a big deal if they're face down, and some players like the feeling of that. So uh, this is done here. You'll be able to give players sort of the option of their characters. So as I note in the online guide, in the manual, uh, you will be sending players pictures of these cards um, that you'll be able to download in the download section. And depending on which one they choose, you'll go, be able to go to here and go flip and be like, okay, what's the motive that they have for this? It's, uh, we can see we resize it here. Anytime controversial and negative things are brought up by Alice, leap to her defense unconditionally. Okay, so you know that that's the, uh, that's the motive for this one. Um, for Dakota, so if somebody chooses Dakota, you'll send them that motive. Uh, flip this card back over. Okay, and then you'll do that with everybody. So you'll know, you know, if you're playing Charlie, which is probably who you'll be playing during the game, um, you'll know you can take your motive, you fear the worst for Alice. Anyway, that'll just help you to be able to have these sorted. So when your players drop into Roll20, you don't have to be looking for the right motive. They're already all lined up. And again, that's going to be key for getting your players through uh, the setup as quickly as as you can. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to not have setup take forever. The quicker we can move them along, the better off we're going to be. Great, we're done with these. We can hide these. You can just go over to this little thing here and hit hide and hide. Great. Okay, we're going to jump to the next section here. Starting hunches. These are a little more specific uh, just to make it easy for them to lay out. So we're going to show suspect and show location. Um, so we'll just drag these out. We might get duplicates here, and if we do, we'll just delete them. Again, you can, we'll see if it pops up. David, we'll go here, and then, oh, these need to be shuffled. So you'll see that sometimes happens. You can just hit shuffle, and it'll fix those. CJ will go here. Uh, oh, we got a duplicate CJ. Okay, so I can just hit delete, or I can right click and just hit delete. It'll go away. Let's see if we get, good, we got Bria. Bria's gonna go out here, and then Halvert. Look at that, perfect. All right, and then I can go ahead and hide that. I'm gonna shuffle these, grab these and start to pull them out. I'm gonna do the same thing and just uh, and just line these up in their sections. And again, if you have read through the manual, read through the rules, you'll sort of know how this starting hunch section works, but each player is going to be grabbing uh, a card that they want to um, talk about uh, in regards to Alice's disappearance, what makes it suspicious, uh, either a place or a person. Um, and once all of them are gone, uh, you'll move on to the next section. Look at that. Perfect. We got all of them out in one try. Uh, so then we can hide this. We don't need this. And then we're good there. That's that's pretty much all we have to do to set up the starting hunches uh, for your players. Then we're going to jump to the next section. That's the clues setup. Um, this one is a little more difficult because all the clue cards have to be split up into their own decks. So they're all split up into here, um, which 
you know, just requires you to show them. I have to shuffle this one. It's probably for me playing the game. Uh, that they're not recalled back into the deck and just drop it into there and then hide. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the 80 card. So I'm going to grab this, pull it out, and drop it down. So that should be one of the three available 80 cards. Uh, same thing with the 70. We're going to shuffle one of the three available 70 cards. We'll drop down to here and hide. Same thing with 60. And all the way through. Now you'll notice as we get near it, uh, there's a 50 card here. As we get near it, the 45 section only has two cards, um, and that's for a very specific reason. If you're playing in person, 45 has three cards just like the rest. But um, in the digital version, there's a card that doesn't really work if you're not together in the same room. Um, and instead of trying to sort of make a digital equivalent of it and have it be you know, half the experience that it is in person. Um, I just omitted it because you, you don't, it doesn't need to be there. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not going to change anything if you get one of the other 45. So we save that for the physical version. I mean, I think that's the only card that's, there's some cards that have changes in text between the digital and the physical. And you might see that if and when you get the physical version. Um, but I think that omitting the 45 card was the only big change I had to make to have the game fully work online. Um, okay, we're almost done here. We're gonna put this in the 30 and hide this and then do the 20. Uh, now you'll also notice that there's no 10 card on this page. Um, and, and that's, for a specific reason. It's because the 10 card doesn't go to a player. All of these cards are going to go to players. They're going to bring them into their hand. We'll go through that when we do setup. But uh, but yeah, the, these cards are all going to go into players' hands. The 10 minute card is going to sit on the table and is going to be given to a player during the game. So speaking of that, uh, we're good here on the clue cards. Um, we're going to go ahead and flip over to the gameplay section. Now, th these are where the cards are going to come out during the game. Again, we'll talk about that in the next video. But for this setup, I'm just going to show the 10 minute card. I'm going to shuffle and pull one. If you want to shuffle the deck, but you don't, it doesn't show up with the shuffle button here. You can always hit shuffle here. And also if you have cards out um, and you want to recall them, meaning they're out on the table or maybe they're in somebody's hands and you want to bring them back, uh, you can hit the recall button and you can recall everything on the table or recall all. Uh, and then you can also shuffle after recalling. Um, we'll do this when we do set up with the players because between the uh, starting hunches, which have one copy of each of the suspects and locations and the actual gameplay itself, we're gonna wanna recall everything back so that all of those cards are then options during the game. So we'll do that then, but just know if for some reason you're setting stuff up or you you know you need to bring cards back into the deck, that's the way that, that you can do it. Um, there's also this little section deal here. This will let you pass cards out to players, but we don't really use that during this game. Um, we're never really like giving everybody one card or something, at least not in the way that Roll20 asks us to do it. So we, we sort of just ignore this deal thing here. You're always pretty much going to be pulling cards from the top of the deck right here. Another thing to note is that if you click that top, so I'm going to do it with like one of these uh, searching cards. Um, if I click one of these top pieces, it'll flip it out here. We don't really ever use that too much either. Um, we usually just hand out the cards. Uh, we usually just drag them out onto the onto the table. Speaking of the searching cards, uh, we're not going to do anything with these right now. They don't come out onto the table. They're going to sit in this section for the actual game along with the suspect and location cards. Again, don't worry too much about that right now. We will we'll get there in just a second and we can hide those. Okay, lastly, we're going to go to the debrief section and I'm going to take the debrief card, which is all the way down at the bottom and show it, shuffle it, and grab it. And there's only one um, one version of these, uh, so it, it's only pulling it's pulling the one one version, which is why you see it says shuffle again. Um, and it'll say there's nothing to shuffle because the card's on the table. Uh, so don't worry about that. So we're going to leave that there. Um, and then ultimately, we're going to be able to flip that card and make it big or pull it into our hand or whatever we want to do when we get to gameplay. So that being said, I'm going to hide this. Now, before players come in, one last thing you're going to want to do is you're probably going to want to 
pull up the cards alongside they're going to need. So I'm just going to show the suspect, show the location, and show the searching cards. So these are the cards they'll want access to during the game. Um, again, we'll make sure they're up as well in the next video, but just if you want to make sure everything is ready before your players join, um, those are the cards that you want to have up on your sort of sidebar. Uh, so yeah, so to recap, we're going to go back to the beginning. We pulled these cards. You're going to send this poster to your players so they know what Alice you all are working with. And then you're going to send them these characters. Uh, following the online guide in, in the in the manual, you'll send them these characters, have them choose. And when they choose, you'll just flip these, uh, grab that motive, and send that motive their way so that they have that. One last thing I want to note is that in the character sheets uh, here, you're gonna have a bunch of sections here for them to fill out. Just make sure these are all clear. Uh, I'm gonna go over the third part of this series is gonna be how to reset the game after you've already played because there is a little bit of like, you know, rejiggering that has to happen to be able to make sure everything's good. One of those things is clearing everything that's in here. But if you typed anything into your character sheets or were just experimenting or something, just make sure they're totally clear so that when players come in, they are uh, able to type into these with no problem. So that's it for the setup for Alice is Missing. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually get your players into Roll20, how to run them through their own setup, the sort of workshop that happens before the game, and then how to actually run the game itself. So I'll see you there.